Now that we've cracked polynomials, we can solve polynomials, but we can solve them for all solutions. Before we get to that, let's learn the fundamental theorem of algebra. Now the formal language is, if p of x is a polynomial of degree n greater than or equal to one, then p of x equals zero has exactly n roots, including multiple and complex roots. Er? All right, what does this mean? Well, it simply means that once we know the degree of the polynomial, that's how many solutions I should have. They aren't all real solutions necessarily, but there should be that many solutions. As we go along, let's test it out. Are you kidding me? Number one is just a basic quadratic that we know how to do for sure. So don't even let me hold you back. Go ahead and solve. I have full faith in you on that one. However, I do wanna make sure that we are communicating mathematically. Did you keep it in an equation going all the way through? And did you clearly show the zero product property? Whew, two solutions. Our degree was two and we have two solutions. Fundamental theorem of algebra. Let's look at number two. Well, number two I can't solve until I have it equal to zero. Once again, quadratic, two solutions, fundamental theorem of algebra. Okay. All right, so quadratic are two solutions. So number three is a cubic. How many solutions would you expect? Three. Let's get it set equal to zero and see how we can factor. All right, it's cubic. So I have my summer difference of perfect cubes, but this is not that. So let's try to use GCF, starting strong. All three terms have an X in common, so I could factor out an X and then factor out the quadratic that's left over. So my final factored form is x times 2x plus 1 times x minus 3. All right, we still have solving to do here, so let's get cracking. Using zero product property, I can set each of these factors equal to zero and solve. Go for it. All right, I got x equals zero, x equals negative a half, and x equals three. Look at that, three solutions for a cubic, degree three. Let's try another one. This time we have a quartic, not set equal to zero, get it set equal to zero. Okay, I've got a quartic, but look at all that I have in common there. I've got a three in common and an x squared in common. Let's GCF this. After I pull out the GCF, can I factor it any further? Oh yeah, I have a quadratic left behind. Whoa, this quadratic doesn't factor. Let's set it up with zero product property real quick. 3x squared equals zero, and then my quadratic equal to zero. How could I solve this? Well, technically I could use a quadratic formula, but hey, a equals one, so I could totally complete the square. So after I completed the square, I square rooted both sides and ended up with x minus one equals plus or minus the square root of negative three. Remember, we have that negative one under a square root. We can pull out an imaginary i. So x minus one equals plus or minus i root three. Add my one to the other side and I can see two solutions there. One plus or minus i root three. Well, wait a minute, this was a quartic. I'm supposed to have two other solutions. I need to have four altogether. Where are my other two? Oh yeah, this three x squared equals zero, I can go ahead and solve by square roots, divide by three, square root both sides. Well, I'm gonna get x equals zero there. Now when I square rooted both sides, technically I had a plus or minus there, but plus or minus zero, that's still zero. So what we have here is what we call a double root. So I have x equals zero with a multiplicity of two, which just means that that solution occurs twice. And we'll totally see what that does to our graph later. Look at number five, it's a quartic, but this one's just quadratic style. Get cracking. factored at x squared plus 4, x plus 1, x minus 1, then I can use zero product property. As I said x squared plus 4 equal to 0, I can solve by square roots, move my 4 over and square root both sides. Well, look at 
that, now we see that an irreducible quadratic factor gives us imaginary solutions. I got x equals plus or minus 2i, so there's two solutions. Then I got x equals negative 1 and x equals 1. Four solutions for a quartic. On number six, before we get cracking, what's our clue on how we factor this one? There's four terms, so we know we're going to group. So we're going to group, zero product property, and solve. Get going. All right, when I factored by grouping, I pulled a 4x squared out of the first term. Now remember, if I pull that 4x squared out of the first term, I still have a minus one in that 4x squared's original position. And then in that second group, I had x minus one. Well, what do they have in common? A one, so I factored out a one. We need to factor something out so that we've saved that spot. So now they have that x minus one factor in common, so I can pull that out, and my leftover pieces are 4x squared plus one. Just now that it's factored, zero product property. So. So for that first factor, I got x equals plus or minus i divided by 2, right? Because the square root of negative 1 is i, and the square root of 4 is 2. Then I got x equals 1. Did I get the right number of solutions? Well, here I have two solutions, then I have one more, three. It was cubic. Last problem. Let's get cracking. x cubed equals 1. That seems way too easy. 1 cubed equals 1. x equals 1. Whew, I'm done. Hmm, seems like I, seems like there's something wrong. Wait, 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 wait. It's a uh, cubic, so I'm supposed to get three solutions. Yeah, I'm not done. Three solutions. Right now we're solving for all solutions, real and imaginary. So I need to set this equal to zero and then crack it. X cubed minus one equals zero. What should I do? Oh yeah, so binomial, trinomial, same sign, opposite sign, always positive. First, last, First term squared, multiply together, last term squared. Remember, it's an equation, so equals zero. Now I'll do zero product property. X minus one equals zero, and X squared plus X plus one. The trinomial isn't factorable, so I'm going to use the quadratic formula. Do you notice that the discriminant under the square root sign is negative? Therefore, I will have imaginary solutions. All right, be sure and clean up the square root of negative three to i square root three, and then we can clearly see we have two imaginary solutions and that one real solution for a total of three solutions for my cubic. Solving for all solutions. Get cracking. <laughs>